Welcome to today's broadcast. No matter what kind of day you're having, please remember that God is big and God is good. He is bigger and better than you think. Now, I mean, no offense to all you dog lovers out there, but when I see a car with large dogs moving constantly between the front and the rear seats, I see a torn up interior. When I see a car with a ladder hanging out one of the windows or a lawnmower sitting in the back seat, I see a poor prospect for a good used car. Recently, I saw three people trying to squeeze a queen-size mattress into the trunk of a subcompact. And yet, people who neglect their own vehicles don't want to buy a vehicle that's been treated like they've treated their own. They want to start off in a car that has nothing wrong with it. They may end up misusing it, but they want it to be as perfect as possible in the beginning. Nobody wants to see a human life start off with anything gone wrong either. In the days before all the imaging was available during pregnancy, family members stood by anxiously in the hospital waiting rooms, hoping to hear the words, everything's fine, the baby is healthy. But even with today's access to prenatal information, family members still have a certain amount of anxiety until both mother and baby are pronounced healthy. And nobody wants to see a human life continue with anything gone wrong. The healthcare industry wouldn't represent one-sixth of the U.S. economy if we thought otherwise. But we have a serious disconnect. While we want the healthcare industry to make us healthy whenever we're not, we don't expect to live in health. If you don't believe me, just listen to how we talk and think. When we see an awareness campaign about a certain health condition on the television, do we refuse to even consider such a condition or do we say, I wonder if I should get checked out? When we read about an increase in a certain disease, do we immediately say no to the thought of it? Or do we worry about getting it? When we hear all the talk about family members who have died from such and such condition, do we immediately say, well, I refuse to die from such and such condition? Or do those death scenarios play over and over in our minds? We have a serious disconnect between what we want and what we expect. And unless and until we intentionally do something about it, what we want and what we expect will remain disconnected. It's not enough for us to understand and accept what Jesus did for us in eternity. If we want our desires and our expectations to be connected, then we must understand what Jesus did for us in this life. For more please give, visit givemethatmountain.org and have a great day.